Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello, podcast listeners. Welcome into this week's look at Appalachian history. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and on today's episode, we're going to tell you about Mount Airy, North Carolina's most famous residence, and no, we're not talking about Sheriff Andy or Deputy Fife, are we, Rod? No, we're not, Steve. We're talking about uh, two individuals that really have a lot of history to them that I didn't know a whole lot about until we started getting ready for this podcast. So, Steve, let's find out a little bit more about Chang and Ng. Well, Rod, our story starts on May 11th, 1811 in Siam, or what's now Thailand in Southeast Asia, where two boys were born to an impoverished Chinese fisherman. Now, these two boys became very close. In fact, they were inseparable, literally, because they were conjoined at the chest and fated to live their lives together. Now, they were called Siamese twins, and they were the first ones called that because of where they were born, a term still used by many to describe conjoined babies. The two were named Chang and Ng. Now, Chang and Ng weren't staying in Thailand forever. In 1829, a Scottish merchant by the name of Robert Hunter, who was living in Bangkok, had a chance encounter with the boys one day when they were swimming together. Being a wily businessman, he realized he could make a fortune with these two, and he quickly negotiated a contract with them to exhibit them as a curiosity on a world tour. And this reminds me of the podcast we did on Eco and Ico. You remember that? Yes, I do, Steve. Where they had all these people going around hunting for folks to display in the circus. Very similar thing here. Anyway, the two young men were pretty smart themselves, and they soon went into business, leaving the merchant behind. Well, they traveled the world as the Siamese twins, attracting huge crowds and, more importantly, large sums of money. And this money had to be invested somewhere. And that somewhere turned out to be... Western North Carolina, of all places, because in 1839, Chang and Ng made a stop in Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and fell in love with the Appalachian Mountains and decided to buy a farm. Their 110-acre spread was located in Trap Hill, and it was here that they set up their own southern plantation, complete with slaves and a more American name, Bunker. Well, they even met and married two local sisters, Adelaide and Sarah Ann Yates. Chang wedding Adelaide and Eng doing the same with Sarah Ann in a double ceremony, of course, on April 13, 1843. And they settled into antebellum plantation life on that 110-acre farm in North Carolina. Chang and Adeline had 12 kids, while Eng and Sarah Ann had 10. And as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. Well, that would have been one of those stories where you'd say, they all lived happily ever after. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. You see, that pesky little bit of history called the Civil War kind of messed things up for the bunkers. Being good plantation owners and not too keen on losing their slave labor, Chang and Ng were supporters of the Confederacy during the war. With the Confederate loss to the Union in 1865, Chang and Ng Bunker lost their slaves and a large part of their fortune. Not only that, but as you can imagine, being married to two men who were conjoined at the chest was not the easiest thing for two women to have to deal with. You know, no privacy and all that stuff. In an effort to refill the coffers after the war, Chang and Ng went back out on the road with little success. They also consulted European surgeons about being surgically separated, but were told that any such effort would likely kill them. So they returned to North Carolina and what money they had left and decided to buy a second house so that they could at least get the two sisters away from each other and maybe, just maybe, cut down on all the fussing and fighting. How would this work, you might ask? Well, the two brothers would spend three days in one home, then go and spend three days in the other home kind of like split custody. This seemed to work as tensions died down a bit, but there was still the problem of money. So touring continued up until 1870. 
In July of 1870, after completing a show in Liverpool, England, they were on their way back to America when Chang suffered a stroke. Chang's health deteriorated, compounded by the fact that he had sought solace in the bottle, becoming a heavy drinker over the next few years. And Steve, in case you were wondering, no, the drinking by Chang didn't affect Ng as they had separate circulatory systems. But you have to wonder what it would have been like being with a drunk that you couldn't exactly get away from. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, I yeah. hadn't thought about that, but you yeah. couldn't get away from him. But if you had a kind of a, a violent drunk, you know, and they start kind of swinging and punching, you know, you have to kind of defend yourself. You know, it's and you're attached. You're joined to the chest. How do you do it? It's kind of wild. I it's crazy. I don't know. But uh, as Forrest sure. Gump says, that's all we got to say about that. That's right. Anyway, Chang's drinking got worse, and so did his overall health. On the morning of January 17th, 1874, Ang awoke to find his brother had passed away during the night. Realizing that this would likely mean his own death within a short time, he obviously panicked, screaming out, Then I'm going! Well, a doctor was summoned to come and separate Ang from his late brother, but he got there too late because Ang had already died. An autopsy revealed that Chang had died of a cerebral blood clot, but Ng's cause of death remains uncertain. Doctors of the time theorized that Ng died of shock due to his fear of impending death. Sarah Ann Bunker, Ng's widow, died on April 29, 1892, and Adelaide Bunker, Chang's widow, died on May 21, 1917. Now, Chang and Ng Bunker left two wives and 21 kids, and today... 1,500 descendants, wow. many of whom have reached prominence in America as military men, politicians, businessmen, and one, Caroline Shaw, who is a composer and who won the Pulitzer Prize for Music in 2013. Wow, that's interesting. Yes, that is very interesting. And it just shows that you know there's all kinds of things that can come out of two people coming over and falling in love with Appalachia, finding some nice girls and settling down. And that's all I've got to say about that, too, Steve. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, that's the story of Chang and Ng Bunker, the original Siamese twins, lifelong residents of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, or on your favorite podcast app. You can follow us on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia and on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody. 